In total, we've lost nearly 1.2 million jobs this year. President-elect Barack Obama there speaking to reporters in his first press conference since winning the White House on Tuesday. All right, Cal, you watched that news conference. Look into your crystal ball and tell us what it says about, first of all, his performance as president coming up and, and the way the media will relate to him. Well, he read the notes and he was very, very careful about what he said, as he should be, because as he said, he's not the president yet. It wasn't really a news conference. It was a opening statement and it was sort of a news availability. I think, uh, Jim, you counted six <laughs> questions and one of them was about the dog. So that's about five <laughs> questions. And only Ahmadinejad was a serious question uh, and he, he wasn't going to answer that. So it was it, no damage was done. He yeah, Judith, you seemed a little disappointed with the questions that were asked. I was a little disappointed that it had how short it was and how few questions were asked. I don't think there's very much you can ask in, in less than 30 minutes. Given all the expectations on this guy's shoulders, Jim, it seems like he should have been up there for two hours. Well, it would have been nice <laughs> to get more questions. But look, I think if anybody doubted that the Obama, yes, we can, great seal, which they released last summer to great, everybody laughed it off, and the thing on the airplane, and, and the Roman columns, and the searchlights that appear, and all those, if anybody thought that was just some accident, now we know there's somebody in the Obama campaign, who, and the Obama operation, who can't wait for Obama to become the greatest, most majestic Roman emperor or president ever. <laughs> and they keep doing it. That's the well, office well, of the president-elect. They just can't, they, there's somebody going nuts. So it, in just the that, art just that president-elect sign has you saying that? I, I mean, I, I what was it about that news conference that has you saying that? I'm sorry? What, what was it about that news no, conference I, I, no, that has no, you saying No, I'm sorry, that? this is entirely visual. This is a tele, television is a visual medium. I was really reacting, especially once you realize he wasn't going to say anything. It was more interesting to watch the trappings. Jim thinks he you should know, have I come think, out in a toga. <laughs> <laughs> I think, the, I don't know if formatics is the word. I think I had the same feeling, you know, having just seen him last winning and the faces in Grant Park and his grin and his family. He was so sober. He barely smiled. The only time he smiled was when he talked about the family dog. And I think that it, you know, he probably has realized, if he didn't already, oh my goodness, we've got a lot to do here. And I think that's what he was seeking to communicate. I found it striking that he didn't introduce any of the panoply of all these advisors behind him, many of whom are very, very well-known figures on Wall Street. I thought that was a very interesting choice. He kept it very brief. He clearly would be criticized if he seemed to be overreaching on President Bush. Well, he also seemed to want the focus to be on him. You noted, Judith, that he said my a lot and I a lot. And yes, and, and that is as it should be. I think what struck me about it was that this is the first time in a long time I've heard Obama say, uh, um, he was actually speaking to us as opposed to orating. And we get a sense of the guy when he said a mutt like me, the self-deprecation, calling all of the reporters by their names because, you know, one of the things that reporters said about him was that even though they traveled on the plane and the train and the buses with him, they had no sense of him. Here well, he didn't have any sense of them either. He had them all written down, if you <laughs> notice. He said, uh, let's see, uh, he looked at the chart and I'll, I'll call on candy. Well, here is one of the things that uh, voters think about the media and the way that the media conducted the campaign. During the campaign, Rasmussen reports asked, most reporters have and the answer, 51% said they have tried to help Barack Obama. Uh, Jim, you, you've noted that, <laughs> that, that, that there was at least the perception, and people seem to be aware of it, that, that, that the media tried to help Obama win this campaign. Right, by 7 to 1, they think that the reporters are siding with Obama over McCain. And by 3 to 1, they said as a general proposition, reporters are out there to shill for one candidate or the other. In this case, obviously, Obama. Look. Uh, you know, it's one of those questions, I mean, I'm sure we'll find some liberal media experts who will say, oh, it's not true, it's not true. Uh, who are you going to believe? You know, the experts are your own two eyes. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's hopefully going to be some soul searching. I fear there may not be. I fear what may happen is the media will now turn on Obama to prove their independence. Oh, well, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's really bad. I mean, the discrepancy between the coverage of Michelle Obama and Cindy McCain, or the Newsweek cover of Obama and the Newsweek cover of Sarah Palin, I mean, it was blatant. Well, if it turns out that Barack Obama is not the second coming, mm -hmm. is he going to get some kind of, you know, nasty coverage, and, and could it come soon? Picking up on what Jane said and you suggested, there was a first sign of that this week on Charlie Rowe's show. He had on Evan Thomas and John Meacham of Newsweek and Tom Brokaw. It was incredible. It was like a one-hour program on buyer's remorse. Listen to what one of them said. Uh, slightly creepy cult of personality. Too self-aware, speaking of Obama. We don't know this guy. 
do we know if he's read any books about China? Well, I'm thinking, why didn't you ask those questions during the campaign? So, so yeah. what happens if all of a sudden, after you know this love fest between the media and Barack Obama, what happens if he, if the press are kept sort of at arm length, arm's length during a Barack Obama administration? And they're inevitably going to turn on him, as all. Admit this happens in every administration. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we should be surprised. Did, 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 it's the natural turn of events. Did the press ever turn on John Kennedy? I think he wasn't around long enough. Okay, to but really I'm saying it, it, they, if they love you enough, they stick with you. All right, time for a break when you.